What is up my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Crowded Lake and today we're gonna be reading chapter five of <laughs> A Lesson in Practicality by Resident Anchor on Wattpad. If you want to support the author or the fic itself, go ahead and use those links in the description below. Please support this author. This is one of the most iconic fan fictions in the entire fandom. Deserves everything it has, if not more. Not even if not, it does deserve more. Uh, with that being said, let's jump right into it. The hero arrives. Roman returned from work in a better mood than he had been in weeks. Whatever slump he had been in since starting his new job finally seemed to be passing and things were looking bright. Naturally, he was singing and walking on his way home and burst into the apartment in a grand gesture. Your prince has returned, my subjects. Roman sauntered into the apartment and was met with the noise of the TV and Virgil on the couch. He glanced around into the kitchen and to find it empty. Are the others not here? They had work. They mentioned it last night. Virgil didn't move from the couch. You seem happy. Virgil looked up and saw Roman glancing at the TV. He looked over and watched a woman talking into a microphone somewhere downtown. Local news. I just wanted some background noise. Shh! Roman walked up to the remote and turned the volume up. Was found late last night. According to witnesses, she left around ten from the local bar, where two men pulled her into his alley. Police... The TV was suddenly shut off and Roman's hand sparked furiously. I, I went out last night. I was near there maybe an hour before. I could have... Calm down, Sparky. You'll break something. Roman threw the remote on the couch and started pacing. No need to get upset. Things happen that you can't control. Virgil looked up at Roman and found the other staring back. What? Roman started to smile and walk closer, causing Virgil to push himself further into the couch. Dude, what? You're, you're creeping me out. You! You're the answer! Roman threw his arms in the air cheerfully. I'm over here thinking I don't need anyone's help and you're the perfect answer. Virgil sat up quickly and put his phone away. No, no way. I do not want to be a part of this. Virgil, don't you get it? Roman motioned to the television. Someone was hurt. I, I get it, Roman. Virgil shot up from the couch. They were talking like someone died, and you want me to help you go back and try to stop it? You'll get yourself killed. No way. He turned and marched out of the room. Virgil, come on. Roman chased after him. Just once, just let me be a hero and save someone. I could have helped them last night. Virgil spun around and glared back. We shouldn't mess with the time stream. Have you not seen any sci-fi movies? Roman looked offended and threw his arms out. You went back in time and dumped confetti on me. Well, yeah, after I already saw you got covered in confetti, I already had. It would have been a paradox if I hadn't. Verge, please. Roman sighed and spoke with a softer tone. Someone got hurt last night, or worse, someone that had a family. They were loved, and now people are concerned, and the people who did it are possibly still out there. Virgil groaned and covered his face. His hands ran through his hair, and he had to pace back and forth. Looking up at Roman, he just met with a pleading look and sighed heavier. Fine, but not before doing more research. Where it happened? When? Are, are they okay? I'm not going to go into this blind. Roman perked up immediately. This is the only time, Roman. You hear me? I'm never doing this again. Roman ran forward and picked up his roommate, spinning in a circle. <gasps> You're a hero, Verge. Pedro was right. You're not a complete storm cloud all the time. He dropped his disoriented roommate and ran to his room. I'll get the costume. You do research. A few minutes later, Virgil was grumbled to himself on the phone when Roman emerged. Looks like it was a woman, and she's okay, but in the hospital. Mugging and assault. That's all the police have said. He looked up and rolled his eyes. 
You look ridiculous, you know that. Shush, and explain how this works. Virgil tossed his phone casually onto the table and squeezed his eyes shut. He froze for a second before breaking free. The world froze around him. He walked up to Roman and went to grab his shoulders to break him free and smiled. I'll get you back for this. Next time I have a sharpie. He grabbed and pulled Roman forward, watching him stumble and catch himself. Welcome to the world of frozen time, Princey. Roman looked around the kitchen. It's a lot more underwhelming than I expected. Well, yeah, you're the flash you want and I'm not. Virgil took a step back. So, when you break free of where you were frozen in time, there's the portal that was created. Roman spun around and looked at the wavy ripple he had been pulled from. Whatever you were thinking of when time stopped, the portal leads there. Mine leads to a different location just before the incident. This is very important. Roman spun around and jumped. Virgil never got very loud. The portal's not visible from the other side. Please remember where it comes out. Time will start again when you jump through. Get your hero business done and jump back, okay? I think the portal will close only after I close it on this side. Don't make me wait all night. Rowan stood up tall and fixed his hair. Technically, you won't be waiting at all. Virgil rolled his eyes and stepped out of the way. Wait, if you stopped time after the first time, did you celebrate your birthday earlier and earlier? That's what you're curious about? No, it, it's a... Uh, Virgil waved his hand while thinking of the correct words. It's a ritual, I guess. To remember the first time I used my powers. Too much work to keep track every time after that. Now go before I change my mind. Roman smiled and stood up tall, marching straight through. He couldn't resist squeezing his eyes shut at the portal, but quickly was met with a dark alleyway and the sounds of the city. That's what had unnerved him about Virgil's ability. The quiet. Nothing moved and nothing made a sound. It was all dead silent. The sounds of the city seemed to be shouting back at him in comparison. Roman ran out of the alleyway he was in and turned around. It was darker. It looked just like the place on the news he had seen. He ran back and saw a fire escape. Jumping up and pulling himself out of the way, kicking his legs and promising himself to work on his upper body strength more. He needed everything to go like he wasn't there until he was needed. And the height could make him have a grander entrance. Roman waited for a while, kneeling down and not dropping his guard. Someone got hurt tonight. His mind was frantic in how this would go, but not a single thought passed about him not being able to help. He was made to be a superhero, and nothing was going to stop him. The sounds of footsteps caught, caught his attention. The scraping and shuffling noises frantically following. Roman peered over the bottom of the fire escape farther. The woman seemed to be stumbling, but two men were definitely pulling her along. The sight made Roman's hair stand on the end, and he couldn't guarantee it wasn't going to surge of electricity he could feel building up. He quickly got on the ladder and jumped down without a thought, stumbling slightly and standing up straight to hide it. She doesn't seem to be very interested in whatever you two have in mind, Roman spoke loudly. He puffed out his chest and made like he was in a scene in a play. He could act any part. This would be no different. One of the men, the slightly taller one, started laughing. The hell you supposed to be, little girl? Roman made an unamused face and took a few steps closer. The man that's going to make you let the poor woman go, and I'm not asking. The shorter of two let the woman go, pushing her into the other's arms before stalking towards Roman. Two hits. That's all I'll take, pretty boy. Aw, you think I'm pretty? Well, the man suddenly ran up and punched Roman in the face. His head turned around and moved as he put a hand on his cheek. Slowly, he looked up, a bit shocked. That didn't hurt at all. What? The man got angry and punched Roman's stomach, causing him to stumble back. He watched the masked man stand up and pat his stomach, seemingly fine. The hell? Roman started to laugh and placed his hands dramatically on his hips. Seems like this will be easier than I thought. 
The man growled and took a step towards Roman. Uh, not a good idea. I'm armed. Roman placed a hand on his back, and the stranger stopped. Let her go or I'll shoot. You don't have a gun. The taller man struggled with the woman in his arms for a second. You don't even have the guts. Roman couldn't stop the smile on his face from growing. Never said I had a gun. He threw his arm out, holding it like a gun. His pointer finger and thumb stuck out and Roman gave a smile. The shorter man started laughing, causing him to catch his breath. You're an idiot, just some loon in a costume. <laughs> he reached into his pocket and pulled out a knife. Should have stayed out of your business. He motioned to Roman with the blade. I, I like the red sash. How about I make the rest of you match? He took one step before Roman aimed and pulled his thumb down, pulling his hand back. A sudden, small shot of blue light raced towards the man, striking him in the chest. He stood on his feet for a second before crumbling to the ground. Roman looked panic, having never used it on a person, but he saw their chest move up and down, still breathing. Good. He looked up at the other taller man and held out his hand. Let her go. You some freak or something? The guy pulled the woman closer and took a step back. Don't matter. Can't hit me when I got her, yeah? You trying to play hero? <laughs> Roman put both his hands together and slowly pulled them apart, bolts of electricity stretching between the two. Don't worry, I don't need to worry about her. A prince must stop the villains, especially with a damsel in distress. He brought his hands together and a little shot lit up the alleyway. The sight alone caused the guy to let go and throw the woman to the ground. Roman took the opportunity to held his hand like before and shot the other man. It was just like a little light show. A true hero never seeks to harm others that don't deserve it. Roman walked up to the woman on the ground, noticing her business attire, looking too disheveled, and her eyes staring at him frantically. He stopped once their eyes met and watched her scoot away. Hey. He kneeled down and spoke softly. Do you have a phone? You should call the cops. Let them know what happened. Yeah? I'm not going to hurt you. I, I promise. Who, who? Who? What? Shh. Roman reached out a hand. Ever have those dreams as a kid that you wanted to make a difference in the world? Just a lucky guy who has a chance. Roman smirked softly at the woman. <laughs> just trying to be Prince Charming, ma'am. I just want to help those who seem like they may need it. It was a solid minute before she reached towards and flinched when they touched, but not a spark came out from Roman's hand. He reached forward and grabbed her hand and stood, pulling her up. Th th thank you. She looked around for her purse and saw it a few feet away. My, uh... Roman nodded and slowly helped walk her over, her body slightly shaking involuntarily. What... What are you? Or... Who are you? Roman watched her pick up the phone and look at him in awe. Just a prince saving a princess. She smiled and nodded, looking down at her phone. I will have to go before the police appear, however. I think I'll be okay. Roman took her shaking hand and reminded her the number of the local police. He listened as she gave the cops all the details she could while Roman dragged the two men to the wall. Once he heard sirens, he gave a two-fingered salute and went back to the wall he was sure he came out of. Reaching forward, he followed it until his hand disappeared, walking forward and not looking back. The last thing he heard was her voice, calling out a thank you. Roman stumbled back into the kitchen and saw Virgil sitting at the counter, biting his thumbnail. His head shot up and jumped down. What took you so long? Why, are you actually concerned about me? Virgil ignored him and shut his eyes. Roman stumbled into the table as the flow of time started back up again. Never again. That was a bad idea. Virgil shoved his hands into his pockets and hunched in on himself. Roman pushed himself up and walked over to Virgil. I got there in time, thanks to you. 
She's okay. I waited for the police before I left. Careful. That almost sounded like a compliment. Virgil looked up at Roman before turning towards his room. I'm gonna hide away until the sun dies down. Don't bother me. Virgil? Roman smiled and took off his mask as his roommate glanced over his shoulder. Seriously. Thank you. Virgil shuddered and retreated back to his room. Roman turned and entered the living room, turning the television back onto the local news. He unbuttoned his prince costume and pulled off the jacket, revealing a plain black shirt underneath as he listened to the news in the background. If you're just joining us, we are at the scene downtown with police who got called late last night from a distressed young woman. According to witnesses, she left around 10 from the local bar where two men pulling her into an alley. Roman tensed up at the news reporter repeating the same news as before. Police arrived at the scene to find two men unconscious. The woman claimed an unmasked hero dressed as a prince had come to rescue. Roman jumped in joy and threw a fist in the air. Yes! Roman, you handsome, smart devil, look at you now! He turned off the TV and headed to his room. This is exactly what I needed. All these ideas. I'm getting our gold! Roman sat down in the living room, scribbling down at his ideas as they came. It wasn't too much longer later that he heard a creak at the door and looked down past the kitchen, seeing Virgil emerge from his room. He calmly walked down the hall and sat on the couch next to Roman without saying a word. Feeling better, J.D. Lightful? Virgil looked up and raised an eyebrow. Uh, from Heathers? I got the reference, Princey. Deciding if I should be flattered or not kind of depends. Oh? Roman leaned over. What does that depend on? Well... First off, if you mean the movie or the musical. Roman huffed and looked offended. <laughs> the musical, obviously. It's like you don't even know me at all. Virgil rolled his eyes. It also depends on which Heather you are. Virgil stretched out a leg and nudged Romans playfully. I'm thinking Chandler, the leader of the She-Devils. I do look good in red, Roman muttered. Ironically enough, I did perform in Heather's before. Roman looked over with a smirk. As one Jason Dean. <laughs> this got Virgil to laugh, the clutch his stomach. <laughs> you? I can't see you as anything that dark. <laughs> Virgil snorted for a second. Actually, he is pretty over the top. Seems like you fit the bill. Roman went back to writing. I'll have you know I did a great job during that play. He smirked to himself. Had to be if I played a convincing straight guy. <laughs> Whatever you say, Captain Bad Breath. Roman shut up and glared at Virgil. I'll have you know, I always kept my breath nice and minty fresh. Never know when I'm gonna need it. Oh, does Princey have a boyfriend? Please tell me about your Prince Charming. Virgil nudged Roman some more. I'm sure you love to gossip. Sadly, I'm on a solo quest at the moment. Not that it's any of your business. He scribbled down a few more notes. You never know when your eyes will meet that of your true love. What would be more embarrassing than bad breath? <laughs> you really do try being a prince, huh? Virgil rolled his eyes. Gross. What did the mighty prince go to college for? Roman looked away and mumbled. Eh, sorry, what was that? I said liberal arts with a minor in theater. I got an accounting job for a bit before the company had layoffs. Roman looked over and Virgil was covering his mouth with a hand and biting back a smile. Um, what's so funny? I like math and science, so what? You're a math nerd? <laughs> Virgil burst out laughing. Oh, Logan I expected it from, but you? No way. Virgil sat up and walked back to his room. I needed that laugh, thanks. He waved over his shoulder. See ya, space cowboy. Did you just make an anime reference? Virgil turned and smiled back at Roman. Did you just notice an anime reference? Roman's face fell. This conversation never happened. Whatever you say, Prince of Nerds. 
Roman looked down at his list of projects and adventures that he had been scribbling and had a bigger, better idea than from before. He flipped the paper over and began furiously writing. The next day of work was the best one Roman had since he was hired. The cafe handed over ownership temporarily while the owner went on leave. His son took over and the place was tanking fast. Unfortunately for Roman, he was hired to assist in the work and had not expected to do any of the work he actually did. The interview named dozens of things Roman never got a chance to do. Instead, the new owner pulled out an old costume and threw away half their ideas. He took the job for a sole purpose of doing what he truly loved. He got the degree because his parents helped take some of the debt off his hands as long as they chose his major. He took the job because the cash was great and worked at the theater on the side. Half the work there was volunteer, but he got the chance to perform and even help teach the younger kids, so it was worth it, even if it meant two jobs. This new place was a cafe that had a stage and performances and everything wrapped in one. It didn't pay nearly as well as the last one, but Roman decided to sacrifice that for doing what he loved instead, which he had started to regret. Now, however, he was back to his usual self and he decided to get things right. He went to the owner with a huge list, all numbers and math he had done the night before. The guy was more than impressed. He was ecstatic. He, kn he knew that of what he was going t into and wasn't ready to run a business. Roman's knowledge of numbers had made them set upon a meeting. Everyone gathered and they talked through changes for the future. Firstly, the mascot costume was done, something Roman was more than happy with. Second, they were bringing back more of the events they held. Roman convinced the theater to run short shows once a month for promotion as long as they got volunteers, something Roman was happy to do all alone if he must. Talking about it got all of his co-workers amped up with excitement as ideas were thrown around. Leaving Roman was pulled to the side and asked if he would change some things. They talked to the original owner and make plans, but in a matter of days, everything was different. It was the first time Roman had felt so light and happy in perhaps a few weeks, and it showed. When he went to the theater, everyone flocked around him as they sang. He was on top of his game and still in a great mood from his recent rescue. When he had come home that night, he sang as long as he could. Even Virgil wasn't as agitated by his singing as much as he usually was, though he still tucked away in his room after a while. When everyone retreated to their rooms for the night, Roman ventured out and down the hall, stopping at Virgil's door. He knocked. Virgil, are you decent? I'd like to think so. Roman opened the door and peered in, seeing Virgil's face lit up with the laptop. What's up? I just wanted to thank you again for what I did the other night. He stepped in and closed the door. No. Roman tilted his head in confusion. No. About what? I, I didn't- I'm not letting you go out again. I don't care what happened. I told you I want no part in this. Virgil never bothered to look up and kept his attention on the screen. Well, I didn't ask you. That's not why I'm here. Virgil took off his headphones and looked up. Then why are you here? You never visit me in my room. Matter of fact, until a few weeks ago, you couldn't stand each other. Roman's shoulders dropped and he groaned. Yes, I know, but that was before. Y you know. We discovered we were all a bunch of freaks. Before I... Roman cut himself off and his brow furrowed in frustration. He had his roommate's full attention at this point and decided to not back out. Before we... Roman grumbled something quickly. He looked up and met with a confused stare knowing he hadn't been heard. Before we learned, we weren't really alone in, in this. It's not something people relate to, and it's nice to be able to talk about it so openly. Roman. I, I mean, it's it's been more stressful than coming out as gay, which I, I'm starting to wonder if it's a side effect of having the powers, because seriously, Roman, what are the odds? I mean, I, I don't know what Logan was about, but like, really, it's completely straight nowadays? That that was rude. What What I meant was Roman. Virgil sighed as the other man finally stopped his rambling. I 
did not miss how hyperactive you can get, Prince. Yeah, sorry about that. Roman glanced around the darkly lit room, vaguely making out movie and band posters on the wall. Maybe your room is cursed, and that's why you're so morbid. Yeah, maybe it's that. Did you come here for something? Roman shifted his feet and put his hands behind his back, standing up tall. Yes, actually. I was here to thank you. Virgil put his headphones back on and went to his laptop. You already thanked me, dude. It's okay. No, not like that. Virgil glanced up at him once more. Maybe one night we can watch a movie or something. I'll buy the snacks and you can pick the movie. Virgil leaned back and raised an eyebrow at Roman, not that it seemed through his bangs. I, I mean, what do you watch anyways? Tim Burton movies and horror flicks? That's not all. I, too, am a Disney fan. Roman chuckled and held out a hand. You love the embodiment of all that is good? What one is your favorite, then? The Black Cauldron. Roman nodded, looking slightly impressed. Besides, they all have some dark things to them, especially the older ones. Well, I'll buy the snacks, and later this week I can prove you wrong. I'll hold you to it, Prince. Logan eventually made his way out into the living area, and Roman had anticipated him immediately. Hey, smartwatch, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. What seems to be the matter, Roman? So I went out and stopped a mugging the other night. Roman puffed out his chest and stood proudly. A slow start, but in the end, everything turned out as planned. Roman, that's... Roman ad looked as Logan adjusted his glasses. Extremely reckless. You should be more careful. Roman pouted and placed a hand on his hip. Logan, I'm a hero and a prince. I find a danger whether I want to or not. However, this may have been my first time in an actual fight. Logan shook his head and let out a breath. That is extremely careless. You could have gotten injured. I had it under control. I have that one move. Roman put up his hand like a gun again. Quit for stunning people. I also let out some sparks. It doesn't do anything, but... It was right that it took some time to spook everyone. Roman crossed his arms. Anyway, that's not the issue. The issue was when the guy punched me in the face. Logan jumped in surprised. Roman, that is the exact thing that we've been warning you about. Roman grumbled and looked away. I told you that I'm fine. I was just curious. Have you ever been in a fight? I felt the punches, but they didn't really hurt. Roman rubbed his cheek that had been taken the punch. Good thing he aimed right for my face. <laughs> I have not. I usually avoid people, let alone confrontation. Logan put a hand on his chin and thought. Mm, this is curious. I wonder if whatever gave us our abilities have heightened other senses or lowered our tolerance to pain. It may just be you, however. This requires further... He froze up and shook his head. Actually, I'm trying not to be so invasive with my tests anymore. Perhaps you should investigate this on your own. Virgil! Roman looked down the hall and saw a head pop out of the door. Perfect. Virgil, you remember the last time we did an experiment? Virgil took a step out of his room. Wait, aren't we drinking again? No, I need you to punch Logan. <laughs> Roman jutted a thumb out to the man. It's for science. Virgil looked over at Logan, and they exchanged a confused glance. Then Virgil shrugged and cracked his knuckles and stalked forward. Virgil, th this is highly unnecessary. Surely you wouldn't do something so savage without reason. Virgil stopped, right in front of Logan, and smirked. Of course not, Lo. Who do you think I am? He pulled his arm ba back and punched Roman in the arm. Stop picking on the nerd, king of nerds. Roman rubbed his arm and looked down. I hardly felt that. Virgil glanced back and forth between the two. What about this? Logan pushed up his glasses and cleared his throat. Apparently, when Roman stuck 
struck the other night, he did not receive any pain from the contact like one would expect. Dude, someone hit you the other night? Okay, absolutely no more using me as your personal driver to crimes, okay? Yes, we've already established you won't help me a second time. A little punch won't hurt me. We are trying to determine if it is simply a side effect of Roman's abilities or if it's tied to all of us. Virgil nodded his head in understanding, then reached out and punched Logan in the arm. Hey! He rubbed the spot and stopped. It appears... I, I am not experiencing pain from that. His face scrunched up in concentration and walked off, mumbling to himself. There he goes. We lost him. Virgil looked up at Roman. I didn't really pull back much, so maybe this theory has proof. When was the last time you felt a lot of pain? Roman hummed aloud. I broke my leg as a child, but didn't cry about it much. I think I sprained my elbow in middle school, but walked around the whole day. Dad took me into the doctor when I complained it hurt to bend. When you experience pain, but to lesser levels, maybe to the point where it doesn't do as much damage. Logan spun around. I conclude. We do not do further research as to prevent harm to ourselves. He cleared his throat. Perhaps we also don't tell Patton we were fighting with one another. Roman groaned. It just upset him. Good idea. Virgil nodded in agreement. We all agreed? Agreed. Virgil quickly shot out a punch to Roman and casually turned around, marching back to his room. Thanks for the science lesson, guys. They're tons of fun. Roman glared at Virgil's retreating form and shrugged it off. I guess I deserve that one. A few days later, the Halloween season was in full effect. October was already started and everyone had put up decorations in the shop windows. Everything was covered in fake cobweb and pumpkin-flavored everything was in every store. Virgil had gotten through the door to one of his later shifts that day. The rush of people making their costumes starting already for a few that planned ahead. He walked into the living room and froze. He could smell apple and cinnamon, which he crinkled his nose at. The two windows had plastic stickers on them and bats and jack-o'-lanterns and one had a witch. There was a black candle burning and it was dripping a rainbow of colors next to the one Virgil was sure was creating the apple cinnamon smell. Roman walked into the room, grabbing Virgil's attention. Well, what do you think? He spun around and admired his work. It would have been so much better with the fake cobweb and spider curtains, but I promised Pat and I wouldn't. It, it's something all right. Virgil didn't bother hiding his smirk. Definitely my style. It's not a little more flashy. Not surprised. Speaking of, Roman picked up a DVD from the table and held it up. I was thinking that we could do that movie night in snacks. I've got the perfect film. Nightmare Before Christmas? Well, you assume because I'm resident emo that I like all the stereotypes? Rowan looked unamused. You have posters in your room of Jack and Sally, and I heard you listening to My Chemical Romance the other day. You fit the bill, Jack. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Virgil headed towards his room. I guess I'm feeling up for it. What snacks did you plan on getting? Already gotten. Roman entered the kitchen and opened the cupboard. I got popcorn and gummy worms and some chocolate because, I mean, who doesn't love chocolate? Ah, you went all out. Roman smiled proudly. I like to go all in, so I covered all my bases. We can start after dinner. It's my night to cook anyway. Virgil glanced back into the living room at the decor, noticing more this time around than the first. A fake bat sat on the shelf, a stuffed black cat on the couch. He looked back at Roman, who was already rummaging through the fridge, decided to retreat to his room for now. After dinner, Patton went to sleep pretty early to be ready for the next day, as did Logan. They both had their work early, while the other two had discussed their jobs calling them in after. So, a late night with movies and snacks was perfect. Virgil checked Logan's chore chart that he had made on the first day that he did dishes while Roman set up a movie. Move-in day seemed like so long ago, but had only been earlier that year. Virgil hardly said anything when he did. It was usually to argue with the roommate he was about to watch a movie with. 
Not that Logan and Patton were any better, the two were not as loud, but they did argue, or debate as Logan put it, over every discussion until they came to a compromise. The first two months were stressful, but knowing they were all keeping the same secret made sense. The telltale sounds of This Is Halloween played from the title screen, and Virgil put the last cup of the drying rack and wiped his hands dry. He entered and saw the couch had more blankets and pillows on it than it did before, and all the snacks were set up on the table. Roman perked up and waved him over. Come on, Nightmare Fuel, I've been waiting. Virgil sat down and grabbed the bag of popcorn for himself, sitting back and putting his feet on the edge of the table, away from the rest of the food. He threw a kernel in his mouth and looked at Roman, who stared back. What? Roman jumped, having been lost in thought. Sorry, I was wondering. Roman turned towards him. You do a bit of makeup, from what I can tell, right? Would you mind if I did yours? What, you want to do my nails, too? Roman looked upset, like he had tasted something sour. No, Princey. I mean, that. My nails are all chipped. He waved his hand at Roman. Sorry, my voice is set to sarcastic. It doesn't shut off. I have some stuff in my room. We can do it after the movie. Roman's eyes lit up so much at that idea. Virgil had no sitting on his tongue, but wouldn't let it loose. It was more friendly than they had gotten before, but was that a bad thing? He started feeling anxious at the idea of taking too long to answer, but not too anxious at the actual thought of Roman letting his wall down and relaxing. Letting his wall slip just a little was a scary thought, but he had put trust in Roman before and had yet to be disappointed. Nah, I have corpse bride. If we could toss that in while we do makeovers and talk about cute boys. Virgil grabbed more popcorn from the bag, chuckling to himself. Now, get the stuff before starting. We have a little bit of time after the opening before the next song. I know you'll be able to resist singing, but maybe we can get some stuff done. As if you're not going to belt out every word with me. Roman bounced up off the couch and bolted for the door to his room. I have the perfect dark purple for your dreary mood. You'll love it. Virgil stared at the doorway with a smile on his face before he realized what he was doing. He shook his head and turned back to the title screen before him, giving it its fullest attention. He was not smiling at Roman. He wasn't. He got up and got a glass of water, definitely not thinking about how he had been more than thanked. And if he had a guess, it felt like this movie night was more than Roman wanting to hang out and ask Virgil for thank you again. They never hung out. Virgil didn't hang with others. He stayed locked away in his room. He walked back into the living room and looked at everything spread out for their chill night. Roman had done it all. Then, even offered to do more. Virgil didn't know the feeling in his gut, but it felt like dread, and he didn't like it. Roman walked out of his room, carrying two bags with a big smile on his face. Suddenly, Virgil wasn't as anxious as before. At least for a few moments. Thank you all so much for listening. If you want to continue to support this person and things, like I said, the description is the perfect place to do that. Yeehaw! These chapters are so long. I was sitting here for 40 minutes. Woohoo! Um, thank you for listening, and... Much like Virgil trying to distinguish his anxiousness from pleasantries, do your best.